I'm working on a few Jonathan Kreisberg licks or maybe patterns is a better word. I have made a video in the past about Jonathan Kreisberg licks, which I will link to, of course. And if you follow my channel, you know that I love books and stuff like that. But this time I actually found an online free lesson by guitarist uh, Mark McKnight. Really good uh, website here, which you, I will link to, of course, as well. And you can check out all the content and this lesson and many other lessons. There are some excellent transcriptions there and be sure to subscribe to his YouTube channel as well. So here, what he has done, he has lifted or transcribed a whole bunch of patterns, licks by Jonathan Kreisberg. I'm sure most of you, if not all of you are familiar with this excellent guitarist. One of the best guitarists on the scene right now, I would say. He has a very specific way of certain uh, playing certain pattern-like sequences. So we'll look at those. And Mark has transcribed a lot of these licks and patterns. And what I love, especially about this lesson, is that it says exactly which solo and the timestamp from where in that solo the lick or sequence happens. So we'll take a look at those. And also, if you follow my channel, you know that I like to make little etudes for myself. I'll put the licks or whatever it is in into kind of an etude. And this time we'll do this licks, patterns, sequences, whatever you want to call them, over the tune invitation. So I made a little exercise, which is on my Patreon page, and we'll take a look at that later on. But first, just let's uh, look at some of these licks, shall we? The first lick is a B altered into E minor. So it's like C melodic minor or B altered, groups of five. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. That's like a five note grouping pattern. And then it turns into like a chordal structures. That's one of the things that he does. The patterns are kind of patterny, but they're often odd note groupings, which makes it sound less predictable or it's more interesting. As opposed to if I was playing. That would get boring after a while, but the five note grouping gives the pattern this kind of angular rhythmic shape to it. That goes against the the timing. In this case, the tune is in five four, so it kind of adds up at the end. But still, so I shall try to play along with the recording. I have slowed it down here, so uh, this is like eighty percent of the speed. Even though I slowed it down, it's still pretty hard to play. So of course, what I want you to do is not just to learn these licks as licks. Try to create your own ideas based on these licks. Try to play this pattern with all the scales that you know. Five note groupings. You could do it in other keys, in other patterns. Try to play it in a different scales over different types of chords. Try to come up with your own five note grouping pattern. That phrase happened at 1 minute and 42 seconds into the solo. The next pattern is from his recording of Juju by Wayne Shorter, the Wayne Shorter tune Juju. That's pretty crazy. First, when I heard it, I thought he was playing this. Like that would be a whole tone pattern, right? But he's playing a C natural. So the chord is B7, all, uh, some B7 whole tone, sharp five. Juju is like a whole tone tune, right? So you would imagine that he's playing whole tone, but 
the second note of all those groupings is not part of that scale, which makes it interesting. It's also a six note phrase played in 3-4 as triplets, which kind of gives it a polyrhythmic feel. So I don't know how he's picking this. It sounds like he's picking a lot. I don't think there's a lot of hammer-ons. You could sweep it. So I'll play the lick as it is. So that's another example of how you take a very obvious scale pattern but you change something so that it's not as obvious. So the idea here is not that you kind of learn these licks and then you go to a jam or a gig and play them, insert your licks and be like, look at what I can do. I sound like Jonathan Kreisberg. That's not how this works. We learn licks to kind of improve our vocabulary, to understand what you can do. So hopefully this will give you ideas to create your own ideas, is what I'm trying to say. Not to just try to copy Jonathan Kreisberg's style, because that's another danger when patterns like this or licks are very kind of trademark a specific guitarist, then it's dangerous kind of because it, you might up ending sounding too much like that guitarist. But for me, I don't worry too much because I don't think I will sound like Jonathan Kreisberg. I can't even play the licks at half tempo. So this next lick is from Summertime as well. It's over E minor. He plays like a G triad and then use the C sharp. Then he moves that. So he kind of mixes those shapes around. Sometimes it's that. And sometimes it's... And, or it could be... Then he goes into kind of arpeggios. So like E melodic minor kind of. That's the lick. That's a long lick. That works really nicely over an E minor major seven, right? Let's say you have an E minor major seven chord. So it's an E. G major, sharp five, then the augmented triad. Then he goes back and forth between D minor. So I'm not sure what the actual chord is that he's playing this over, but you should be able to apply these licks to their harmonic context that it fits. So sometimes, you can kind of stretch the harmony if you take a very obvious and then move around. Even though nobody's playing that D minor, let's say you're in E minor, 
you're kind of going outside by shifting the pattern. If the pattern is very obvious in and of itself, you can move it around in this way. Also notice here how it's not consistent. He's not playing the same thing. He's kind of shifting between different shapes so that it doesn't sound like you're playing an exercise. So I'm not playing all of these, I'm skipping a few here. Here's another one from Juju, I think. So it's a nine note grouping, or four plus five, if you will. So playing a three, four, and thinking triplets. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Gives you that polyrhythmic feel. So it's a G triad with a sharp 11. I just think of that as a leading note into the fifth. And here's another example of how he kind of takes a shape and just moves it up chromatically and kind of plays his own harmony on top of the existing harmony because the pattern is so strong in and of itself. You can kind of hear the shifting harmony. And the reason that it works also is because it's not a super clear, it's not a super obvious pattern like that would be kind of boring, but instead it's this kind of angular polyrhythmic kind of pattern. Next lick is from Five Bucks a Bungalow. Here he's using the same kind of shape but in a different context. And he's moving it in a little bit more, less patterny kind of way. So he kind of shifts to a different place in the middle of the phrase, kind of. example of how he kind of jumps between different patterns in a kind of unexpected way. He kind of starts the next pattern there on the last note, so he doesn't always start the next pattern, the next... He plays this shape, but he doesn't move it consistently, it's kind of... He kind of moves them around differently. He starts that shape on that last note. This is a diminished triad, right? That was from the tune Michelle uh, of the Beatles tune, right? 251 into that tune. Next lick is a very Jonathan Kreisberg sounding thing. He's playing quintuplets. <laughs> so they're just arpeggios from the 
melodic minor, C melodic minor. But starting on the seventh, and go to the seventh. I think I might have transcribed this in the previous lesson, a similar. I've heard him play this quite often. This five note pattern seems to be a thing he favors. So this could just be a technical exercise. Try to play this pattern with any scale from the, like over the entire fretboard. So you can play this as quintuplets like he's doing here. This is from uh, Strange Resolution. Let's uh, actually listen to it. So doing that in a break. So remember that I've slowed it down to seven. That's 70% of how fast he plays it. This kind of pattern sounds best if you play them really rapidly, like super fast. And of course, obviously, Jonathan Kreisberg is famous for having fantastic, very, very clean technique. I remember I saw him or heard him play in Toronto maybe 10 years ago or so, and I was totally blown away by his sound and the very, how clear and clean his sound was and his technique. But he's much more than just some guitar player with fancy chops who can play fast. He's an unbelievable guitar player, one of the best players of our time. And you can check out his YouTube channel. There's a couple of videos. For example, he plays a Debussy piece, Claire de Lune. And just the level of guitar play is absolutely amazing, if you ask me. The tone and the way he can seamlessly play these incredibly difficult shapes, not for guitar at all. It's a piano piece, right? But it seems like it's super easy, but it's extremely difficult. There's another video somewhere of him playing Caravan, where he's playing a bass and melody at the same time. And he's kind of using these polyrhythmic techniques, which is extremely advanced, but it sounds so easy. So check out his music, his records and other records that he's on. And I think you'll be, if you haven't already, most of you, I think have. But if you haven't checked him out, you should do so. And I think you'll be, you'll, uh, you can thank me later. So this link, we're gonna steal and take that for, to use it over uh, invitation. Next one is a similar kind of five note grouping, but this time he's using a diminished scale. And then it resolves it into a difference. So the first one is like a, I don't know, it's a C tried with a sharp nine, then F sharp minor. Because it's diminished, you can half hold, you can move it up. You could keep going with that, right? I love that. But here he's just playing. That's F sharp minor. And then E with a sharp nine. And it resolves into some kind of F. This is from the tune, The Best Thing For You. Here he's phrasing it a little bit differently. He's playing it as two eighth notes and a triplet. So instead of quintuplet, it's... You could play this as quintuplets as well. If you play it as an eighth note, it's gonna be like an odd time or an odd note grouping. But that's like the best uh, lick I learned of all of these. But I, if I play it as diminished from the diminished scale. So that's F sharp. C minor, A, E flat minor, C. So it's, I'm actually going up like the scale with a pattern, right? The next pattern is from the tune Kitos, which uh, is Finnish for thank you. So I guess he 
has some kind of relationship to Finland. Maybe he had a really good gig there. So he's kind of playing the same shape. Again, it's a nine note shape. So as triplets in three, four. One, two, three, one, two. And then it's just playing different shapes. Major seven, minor seven flat five. Major. Nine-note groupings are great. That's something overlooked. We've rarely practiced nine-note groupings, but especially as triplets, even if you play in 4-4, four, four, try to experiment with that. You can create some really interesting... Actually, we'll do that later on, I think, in the little etude that I wrote. I'm moving kind of quickly here. I'm not playing all of the patterns, but most of them. But again, you can, I'll link to the website so you can find this for yourself. And again, don't forget to check out all his other stuff. The south of everywhere, he's using the same kind of pattern, but he kind of fits it into a 5-4 time signature. So now we're in 5-4. So it's a D minor, C sharp minor, D major sharp five, D major seven sharp five, E seven arpeggio, F sharp major, F sharp minor seven flat five. And that's from the tune, The South of Everywhere. The next phrase is a little bit uh, crazy. We get into kind of Alan Holdsworth territory. There's some kind of E-flat sus shape. Move it down. I don't know how to analyze the last shape. kind of things is kind of like it's something that Alan Horsworth would play with those big stretches or Scott Henderson kind of things. I find that it's even if I practice that stuff I rarely it doesn't find its way into my playing for some reason. Next we have an arpeggio. I guess it's like an A flat major 7 arpeggio of some sort. With an add nine thrown in there, and we're jumping around. So that's another really interesting thing. It's not a generic four-note arpeggio, but we're kind of jumping around. Jazz musicians always try to find arpeggios and shapes that are not, you know, doesn't sound like you're practicing like the, you know, the standard arpeggios. You're skipping notes and for guitar players our fingers can kind of dictate what we're playing it's this it fits the guitar again i don't know how much he's picking or if he's kind of using hammer-ons and pull-offs so this is from his solo over gone with the wind the standard
So this could be over an F minor or A flat major seven. If I move it down, it could be over like an E minor, E minor nine. And then later in a solo, he shifts to major. That's the next example here, I think, which is from, that's also from Gone, Gone with the Wind. He takes that phrase and moves it around, sounds like this. Oh yeah, he, here he turns it into a 5-4 kind of phrase. technique exercise it's hard to play this stuff I think it's using legato it makes sense to use legato here It's a pretty cool lick. So there's a few more here, but I want to move on to my little A2 here. So I'm kind of hoping that you know the tune uh, invitation changes to that. So first we'll use this lick. I change it a little bit to fifth C minor. C minor, melodic minor, and then for the B thirteen, B flat thirteen, I find I play that that lick that we learned, and then everything is transposed to E flat minor, major seven. And of course, you can find these uh, stuff on my Patreon page. I don't think I'll play everything because the video is going to take forever. But then when we hit that C sharp minor, I play the pattern as Dorian instead. And then there's an F sharp altered. And B melodic minor. B Dorian. Altered. Uh, and then we have A melodic minor. A Dorian. D7 altered. So I'll maybe I'll play that section. keeps going like that over the whole set of changes. 
The next chorus starts with this kind of nine note phrase. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then I go up the scale and I think you'll hear how displaced everything sounds if I play it over a 4-4. Four, four. so on and so forth. Let me play it, let's try to play a little bit faster and you will hear how it sounds even more kind of rhythmically ambiguous. I love that, the nine note groupings in triplets is a really cool thing to do. Mm -hmm. Lastly, I took that uh, five note, the quintuplets. I'm gonna have to slow it down here. Then you try to do that over the all the other chords. I have it written out. It's pretty hard to do. The point of this is not for you to memorize or look at what I did and try to learn it as a classical piece, but rather to understand that you can take any pattern and try to play it over a tune like to invitation, you have to kind of be able to transpose to the whatever melodic minor scale is happening over that chord. So by studying the, what I have, and again, all this stuff is on my Patreon page for you, my paying patron members, so that you can study it like that and come up with your own patterns and try to play these patterns over other tunes. If, you, if that's too hard for you, try to do it maybe over just a static chord at first. It's a little bit difficult to do it over a tune like Invitation. I was kind of just setting the bar pretty high there. And then in the process of doing all that, you hopefully expand your vocabulary and your ability to play kind of 
patterns that are kind of interesting because some people are against patterns. They avoid patterns at any cost. Like they never, I never play pattern, blah, blah, blah. I like to hear patterns because the ear can pick up on it when you're listening to players. John Coltrane played patterns, but you don't want the pattern to be kind of too uh, obvious. You want them to be kind of more interesting. And this, I think Jonathan Kreisberg is a very good example of a player who uses patterns in a very interesting way. So hopefully by studying all this stuff, the etude I created there and the lesson uh, that I'm linking to, you can find uh, inspiration to uh, learn about this stuff. But ultimately you wanna transcribe solos yourself and come up with your own patterns and all that stuff. So with all that, as always, I wanna thank you for your time and attention and I shall see you next time.